Welcome to the baptism preparation class. We're going to start out with a song and then pause the video for an opening prayer. Jesus, when the Baptist questioned why, had to enter with my father in the kingdom up on high. Now we know that we must all so witness faith in Jesus' word, be baptized to show obedience as was Jesus Christ our Being baptized and confirmed, a member of The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, is a beautiful beginning, the start of a new life as a covenant disciple of Jesus Christ. Whether you feel excited, nervous, or a little of both, you can make sure that you don't walk this path alone. Heavenly Father will be by your side. A Promise to Try by Tammy Green, based on a true story. The sun was going down as Tatsuki rode his bike home. He loved zooming down the small hill by his home, but he needed to be back before it was dark. When Tatsuki rolled his bike to a stop, he saw his primary teacher, Sister Yamada, walking up to his apartment building. Hi Tatsuki, Sister Yamada said with a smile. I'm here to talk to you about your baptism. Tatsuki's family had just started going to church again. He liked being with his friends in primary and was especially excited to be baptized. Sister Yamada and Tatsuki rode the elevator together and joined Mom in the apartment. Tatsuki, I'm so glad you've chosen to follow Jesus Christ by being baptized, Sister Yamada said. When we are baptized, we make covenants with Heavenly Father. Do you know what a covenant is? Tatsuki didn't know Sister Yamada was going to ask him questions. He started to feel a little nervous, but Mom smiled encouragingly. Promises? he asked shyly. That's right, Sister Yamada said. Heavenly Father promises us that we can always have the Holy Ghost with us. Do you know what we promise Heavenly Father? Tatsuki shook his head. I don't know. I'll give you a hint. The promises are in the prayers we hear before we take the sacrament, Sister Yamada said. We promise Heavenly Father that we are willing to take upon us the name of Jesus Christ, to always remember Him, and to keep His commandments. Do you know what it means to take Jesus' name upon us? Tatsuki shook his head again. Mom helped him. It means we are happy to say that we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, she said. It means we will do what Jesus would do if he were here. What kind of things would Jesus do, Tatsuki asked. Well, he would be kind to people. He would help people who are sad or sick, Sister Yamada said and he would teach people how to follow the commandments. Tatsuki had a sinking feeling in his stomach. I don't think I can be baptized, he said. Why do you think that? Mom asked. There are so many promises. I don't think I can be like Jesus every day. Mom gave Tatsuki a hug. Remember when you helped Yuna when she was crying yesterday? Tatsuki nodded. His little sister had been sad, so he made funny faces and played with her until she was happy again. And remember how you helped your cousins share and be nice to each other last week? You were following Jesus when you did both of those things. Tatsuki didn't know that's what it meant to follow Jesus. He started to feel a little bit better. 
He could do things like that. Sister Yamada said, and whenever we make a mistake, we can always repent. That just means we can say we're sorry and try to do better. Then Heavenly Father forgives us and we can always keep trying. Tatsuki didn't feel so worried anymore. He felt happy. I want to be baptized, he said. Mom and Sister Yamada smiled. Sister Yamati gave Tatsuki a Book of Mormon with his name written on it. Tatsuki felt happy that he could try each day to be like Jesus. Now he couldn't wait to be baptized. Questions and answers about baptism. Do I make a promise when I'm baptized? Yes, you promise to keep Heavenly Father's commandments. He promises that you can live with him in his kingdom. These promises are called covenants. Where will I be baptized? Where possible, you will be baptized in a font, in a stake center. If you cannot be baptized in a font, you may be baptized anywhere approved by your bishop or branch president, such as a pond or ocean. There has to be enough water to cover you completely. That's why baptism by, that's what baptism by immersion means. Why is baptism important? It's more than important, it is necessary. Jesus Christ said that people must be baptized to belong to his church and enter the kingdom of God. John 3, 5 says, Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Is baptism scary? No. The person baptizing you holds on to you the whole time. You are under the water for only a moment. What do I need to do to prepare to be baptized? You have to want to be baptized, keep the commandments, be willing to live the teachings of Jesus Christ and follow his example, be interviewed by your bishop or branch president. Why aren't babies baptized in our church? Children are born innocent. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ give parents eight years to teach their children the gospel so their children can learn right from wrong before they become accountable for their sins. Who can baptize me? A priest in the Aaronic priesthood or a man who holds the Melchizedek priesthood. When can I be baptized? You need to be at least eight years old. What will the person baptizing me say? He will say, having been commissioned of Jesus Christ, I baptized you, baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, amen. What happens after baptism? After you are baptized, you are confirmed a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. You are then accountable for your sins, and you need to repent when you do something wrong. Before you take the sacrament each week, you should repent of whatever you did wrong that week and ask for forgiveness. Then, when you take the sacrament, you covenant to take upon yourself the name of Jesus Christ which means you will always try to remember him, follow his example, and obey him. When you do this, you are promised that his spirit will be with you. What will I wear when I am baptized? White clothing usually borrowed from your stake, district, or mission. Do the scriptures tell about people who are baptized? Yes, here are some you can read about. Adam, Alma, Jesus Christ, 3,000 in one day, Paul, Limhi and his people, Zeezrom, and Joseph Smith. Finding Sabrina's Testimony by Elizabeth Shelby based on a true story. Sabrina and mom flipped through the pages of Sabrina's baptism book. Sabrina had just turned eight and her baptism was two weeks away. She was excited and a little nervous to be baptized. Look at how much we've done already, Mom said. She flipped through the pages. The book was to help Sabrina get ready for baptism. They had filled out the pages about her favorite things and another page about her family. Then they came to a page with the words, My Testimony, at the top. I don't want to fill that one out, Sabrina said. Okay, Mom said, turning the page. We can fill it out later. I don't think I want to fill it out at all, Sabrina said. Why not, Mom asked. Because I don't know what a testimony is. Sabrina felt her face turn red and hot. Mom paused. It means knowing Heavenly Father loves you. But Heavenly Father hasn't answered my prayers. Sabrina's eyes stung with tears. I've been praying for a whole month to find my blanket, but I still can't find it. Sabrina loved her blanket. It was soft and pink. 
Her grandmother had made it for her when she was born, and she had slept with it every night before it got lost. Mom wrapped her arms around Sabrina. Sometimes Heavenly Father doesn't answer our prayers right away, and sometimes his answer is no. But that doesn't mean that he doesn't hear our prayers or that he doesn't love us. Sabrina sniffed. I guess. On Sunday, Sabrina's primary teacher, Sister Lee, read a story from the friend. It was about a boy who was upset because he heard bad words on the bus. He prayed about his problem. Then he had the thought that he could listen to his headphones on the bus. That thought was the answer to his prayer. Oh, is that all? Sabrina asked. I thought answers to prayers were bigger than that, like hearing a voice or seeing an angel. Sometimes that's true, Sister Lee said, but most of the time the Holy Ghost answers our prayers in quiet ways, like an idea or a warm feeling. Sabrina looked at the picture of the boy on the bus. She thought about the light, happy feeling she had about getting baptized. Maybe that was the Holy Ghost telling her that it was a good choice. Maybe she really did have a testimony. Sabrina's baptism day came. Her dad took her hand and she stepped into the warm water. When she came out of the water, she felt happy. And when dad laid his hands on her head to give her the gift of the Holy Ghost, she felt warm all over. The next Sunday was Fast Sunday. People got up to share their testimonies. Sabrina jumped out of her seat and walked up to the front of the chapel. She took a deep breath and smiled. She knew what she was going to say now, and she knew what she was going to write on that blank page in her baptism book later. She fa hadn't found her blanket yet, but she had found her testimony. Some children may worry about baptism because they don't think they have a strong enough testimony. But all you need to do is remember the good feelings that you've had while doing something kind, or singing in primary, or talking about the gospel. Think of ways that you know Heavenly Father loves you. All of these are the beginnings of a testimony, and your testimony will grow over time as you keep making good choices. So what should you expect when you're getting ready to be baptized? Well, a good place to start is preparing for the interview you will have with your bishop or branch president. There will be questions like, why is baptism important? And what does it mean to take upon you the name of Christ? Knowing these things can help you be prepared for this discussion. Remember that the bishop is there to help you be ready, not to quiz you or put you on the spot. And remember, you can always have an adult, another adult, accompany you in the interview if you want. Another thing is to be prepared about what to expect physically on the day of baptism. On the day of the baptism, you will go down into a font that looks like a big bathtub, and then the priesthood holder will say the prayer and then will dunk you under the water and back up. Before you go under the water, you can plug your nose if you'd like. If you are afraid of going underwater, prayerfully consider ways that you can overcome your fear as your baptism approaches. Maybe you could watch someone else being baptized to see how briefly they are underwater. Or maybe you could practice plugging your nose and putting your face underwater at home to get used to it. And there might be someone in your area who teaches children how to swim who would love to give you some advice. Just remember, Heavenly Father will give you courage as you try and seek to do His will. The more prepared you are about the physical details of the baptism, the more you will be able to relax and focus on the spiritual covenant that you are making. After you are baptized, you will be confirmed a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and you will be given the gift of the Holy Ghost by someone who holds the priesthood. What will happen then is that you will go either on the day of your baptism or shortly thereafter, usually on a Sunday during sacrament meeting, you will go and sit in a chair that is ready for you and those members of the priesthood who you have asked to give you the blessing will come up, they will lay their hands on your head and give you the blessing. Easy peasy. Jesus was baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist, in the River Jordan, or Jordan River. <laughs> John.
John the Baptist was in the water, baptizing other people. And then he saw Jesus. John's like, what? You want me to baptize you? You should be baptizing me. John asked why he needed to. He didn't have any sin. Jesus says, I must be an example to all who is righteous. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. So then he baptized him. He got baptized by immersion by going all the way underwater. Heavenly Father was happy about it because he knew that it was going to help other people to be on the right path to go up to heaven. And then Heavenly Father speaks from the sky and says, Behold, this is my beloved Son, and which who am I pleased? Jesus got baptized and he was being obedient to his dad. He said it was because it was a commandment. He did it because he wanted to be an example, so everybody else knew that that's what they needed to do. Even though he's perfect and it didn't need to be baptized, he wanted to be an example so that other people could be baptized and know that that was the right thing to do. I think we get baptized because we, it washes all our sins away. It cleans your body spiritually so we can live with God again. Becoming a full member of the church. And um, we make a covenant to Heavenly Father and Jesus that we will keep his commandments. I'm reading the scriptures a lot and following Jesus, praying every day. I'm swimming around in my pool to practice getting baptized. At first, I was kind of nervous. And afterwards, I just felt so happy. And it was good for me to get baptized because I'm the oldest and it set an example for my brothers. I'm gonna be baptized and I'm gonna be blessed with the Holy Spirit. All the sins that you had are washed away and you are clean so you can get the gift of the Holy Ghost. You have the Holy Ghost to help you and to look after you when you need him. It allows you to feel the Holy Ghost and it tells you that what's right and what's wrong, like what to do and what not and he, he will be your friend no matter what. One of the main things to focus on is progress, not perfection. Sometimes, maybe because we talk so much about the cleansing aspect of baptism, children misunderstand and think that they're supposed to be perfect after the ordinance. Some of the most common stories we hear is the panic a child experiences when they make a mistake for the first time after being baptized. After feeling so clean and pure, arguing with a sibling or forgetting to do a chore can make them feel like they've ruined that good feeling forever. It's crucial that we understand the principle of repentance. We need to understand that recognizing our mistakes and learning from them is part of how we learn and grow here on earth. We can pray for forgiveness at any time. And we can take the sacrament each week. And at the sacrament, we renew those covenants that we made at baptism. The chance to repent is a blessing and a gift. Baptism isn't about being perfect now, but rather about entering the covenant path and taking daily steps to become more like Jesus Christ. Repenting and Trying Again by Jane McBride, based on a true story. Are you excited to be baptized, Raymond? Yes! Good, do you know what it means to take the name of Jesus Christ? It means trying to do what Jesus wants me to do. Exactly. Sometimes I make wrong choices, but I'm trying to do better. We all make mistakes, but we can repent and try again. Soon, Raymond was baptized. A few weeks later, crack! You're always ruining my stuff. I'm sorry, I just wanted to look, but I dropped it. Don't ever come into my room again. We can repent and try again. I'm sorry I yelled. I know you didn't mean to break it. I'm so happy I can always try again. 
President Dallin, Dallin H. Oaks has said, as true believers in Christ, as Christians, we have gladly taken his name upon us. When I was 12 years old, my family lived in Göteborg, a coastal city in southern Sweden. We attended church in a large, remodeled home. One Sunday, my friend Stefan, the only other deacon in the branch, greeted me at church with some excitement. We went to the chapel's adjacent overflow area, and he pulled from his pocket a large firecracker and some matches. In an act of youthful bravado, I took the firecracker and lit the long fuse. I intended to snuff out the fuse before it blew up. But when I burned my fingers trying to do so, I dropped the firecracker. Stefan and I watched in horror as the fuse continued to burn. The firecracker exploded and sulfurous fumes filled the overflow area and the chapel. We hurriedly gathered up the scattered remnants of the firecracker and opened the windows to try to get the smell out, naively hoping that no one would notice. Fortunately, no one was hurt and no damage was done. As members came to the meeting, they did notice the overpowering smell. It was hard to miss. The smell distracted from the sacred nature of the meeting. Because there were so few Aaronic priesthood holders, and in what can only be described as dissociative thinking, I passed the sacrament, yet I didn't feel worthy to partake of it. I felt horrible. I was embarrassed, and I knew that what I had done had displeased God. After church, the branch president asked me to come to his office. After I sat down, he looked at me kindly and said he had noticed that I hadn't partaken of the sacrament. He asked why. I suspect he knew why. I was sure everyone knew what I had done. After I told him, he asked how I felt. Through tears, I haltingly told him I was sorry and that I knew I'd let God down. President Lindbergh opened a well-worn copy of the Doctrine and Covenants and asked me to read some underlined verses. I read the following out loud. Behold, he who has repented of his sins, the same is forgiven, and I, the Lord, remember them no more. By this ye may know, if a man repenteth of his sins, behold, he will confess them and forsake them. I will never forget President Lindbergh's compassionate smile when I looked up after I'd finished reading. With some emotion, he told me that he felt it would be fine for me to resume partaking of the sacrament. Thank you. As I left his office, I felt indescribable joy. Such joy is one of the inherent results of repentance. Jesus Christ can forgive because he paid the price for our sins. Our Redeemer chooses to forgive because of his incomparable compassion, mercy, and love. Our Savior wants to forgive because this is one of his divine attributes. And like the good shepherd he is, he is joyful when we choose to repent. I invite you to feel more joy in your life. Joy in the knowledge that the atonement of Jesus Christ is real. Joy in the Savior's ability, willingness, and desire to forgive. And joy in choosing to repent. So as a quick recap of everything we've learned, let's go over a few things. Here's a list of things to do before your baptism. You have an interview with your bishop. You can decide with your parents who will perform the baptism and act as your two witnesses and make sure they bring their temple recommends. 
If appropriate, you can ask people to participate in the program for prayers, music, and talks. Make sure you coordinate with your primary president and anyone else who you will be getting baptized with that day. Invite all your family and friends to your baptism. Make a list of things to bring to your baptism, including a towel, dry clothes, and white underwear, a blow dryer, brush, and anything else you might need. When we are baptized, we take upon ourselves the name of Christ. We always remember Him. We keep His commandments. We serve Him to the end. If we repent, we are forgiven, and we always have His Spirit to be with us. And remember, you don't have to be perfect after you're baptized, because when you take the sacrament, you renew your baptismal covenants and are clean all over again every week. And this concludes our baptism preparation course. Thank you for joining us. We will now have a closing song, and you can end with your own prayer.